Hello, honors biology students. Today we're going to go over photosynthesis with some photosynthesis notes. Please make sure that you are taking notes on your note sheet as we go along. If I go too fast for you, hit the pause button, make sure you complete your notes, and then continue on with the video. So, what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process that converts energy from the sun into glucose and oxygen. This is a very important process. Without this process, the majority of life on Earth would not exist. Photosynthesis occurs in producers. Producers are just a fancy way of saying plants, and producers are responsible for converting the light energy from the sun and storing it as chemical energy. And in our case, we call this chemical energy ATP. We're going to talk more about ATP later on in this presentation. This process occurs in chloroplasts, and we know from Unit 1 that chloroplasts are only found in plants. The reactants in our photosynthesis equation are carbon dioxide, water, and energy, and our products are glucose and oxygen. So I want you to think about reactants and products like ingredients and a cake. The reactants are your ingredients. So if you were baking a cake, it would be things like eggs and sugar and flour. You need all of the reactants to make your product, which would be the cake. If you tried to make a cake without sugar, it wouldn't taste very good. You wouldn't get the correct end product. So in this case, just like you would if you needed it to bake a cake, you need carbon dioxide, water, and energy. You need all three of your reactants to make both of your products, our glucose and our oxygen. There are two ways that we can represent this equation. So the first way listed on the slide is the chemical equation. So that's using our symbols for the actual compounds that are mixed together in photosynthesis. And the second one is our word equation. So our chemical equation is 6CO2 plus 6H2O with light energy gives us C6H12O6 plus 6O2. The word equation is carbon dioxide plus water with the help of light energy gives us glucose and oxygen. All of these line up. So CO2 is the same thing as saying carbon dioxide. H2O is the same thing as saying water. C6H12O6 is the same thing as saying glucose. And O2 is the same thing as saying oxygen. Like I said, in plants, photosynthesis takes place inside our chloroplasts. So over here, if you're looking, if we have a plant and we look really close and look at their cells, we see all these little green dots. Those green dots are our chloroplasts. And there's a couple structures inside the chloroplasts we're going to talk about now. This picture here of the plant cells should look really familiar because this is pretty much what we saw when we looked at our Elodea under the microscope. So inside the chloroplast, we have a couple different things going on. So first of all, we have these sac-like photosynthetic disks um, that are surrounded by membranes. And this is called a thylakoid. So this whole little disk here that kind of looks like a green M&M, that's a thylakoid. The stack of a bunch of thylakoids together, one of these is called a granum. All of the granum in a chloroplast are called the grana. So one of these stacks of green M&Ms is the granum. In between the granum, we have our photosystems. And photosystems are proteins in our membranes that organize chlorophyll and other pigments into clusters called photosystems. These photosystems are the light collecting units of the chloroplasts. They contain all of the chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is actually what gives my chloroplasts the really green color. And without chlorophyll, our chloroplasts wouldn't look green, our plants wouldn't look green. So chlorophyll is our main pigment that we find inside our plants, and that's what actually does the trapping of the light. Lastly, we have the stroma. So the stroma is the region outside my thylakoid membranes, outside these stacks, and outside the photosystems, and they're similar to like the cytoplasm of an entire cell, so this is just the space in between everything else. 
although we show photosynthesis like it's one giant reaction, it's actually two separate reactions that take place inside the chloroplast. We have the light dependent reactions, and these are reactions that occur within those thylakoid membranes, those stacks. They take the light energy collected by the chlorophyll and water, and they create the oxygen. The light independent reactions, which are also called the Kelvin cycle, occur in the stroma, which is like the pseudocytoplasm inside the chloroplasts. And this takes carbon dioxide and creates the sugars or the glucose. Once glucose is created, they are then put together to make larger molecules called starches. So we talked a little bit about this in our um, Life on Mars lab. Sugars are just our simple sugars, our simple carbs and starches are complex carbs. And the only difference between simple and complex is how many of these things are strung together. Simple sugars only have a few strung together. Complex have a ton of them strung together. So this is my chloroplast. We've got our grana right here, which are the stacks of thylakoids. Each of these individual little stacks is called the thylakoid. And we've got our stroma. So, our grana, our thylakoids, collect the light and the oxygen. This right here, NADP plus and NADP plus P, we're going to talk about in a little bit, so don't get too caught up with that for right now. So the grana, the thylakoids, collect the light, they collect the water. These are my light dependent because they depend on the light. They can't occur unless the light comes in. They create my oxygen. They also create this really fancy, important molecule called ATP, and this is energy. And the reason why this has to run first is because my light independent reactions, or the Calvin cycle, requires this ATP energy. The Calvin cycle then takes CO2 and, with the help of ATP, converts it into my sugars. Again, those sugars are glucose, and they're strung together to form our starches. So I said we'd come back and talk about what ATP is because it's really important. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. I don't really care. Don't get caught up in like the crazy word that that is. I just want you to know that ATP is an energy molecule. If you're super curious, adenosine is an adenine, which is a nitrogen base, which we're going to talk about when we come back to DNA, and a ribose sugar. Triphosphate means we have three phosphates that are bonded together in a straight line. The phosphate part is what is important to us. ATP, like I said, is the chemical that cells can use. So our bodies run off of ATP. In between these phosphates, these like red little bonds that we're showing here, they contain a lot of the free energy. This is where all of our energy comes from. So the more phosphates we have on our molecule, the more energy that molecule has. When our phosphate gets let go, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the tri for three phosphates, turn in, turns into ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. Di means two. Now we have two phosphates. So when we break off this last phosphate molecule, we release all of this energy that our bodies can actually use. So at this point, you should have your notes totally filled out. What I want you to do is go and take the quick check practice quiz on Google Classroom. It's just an assignment, so go to our classwork page, click on the assignment, and take the quiz. Regardless of how you do on the quiz, you're going to get credit for just taking it. Check your answers. Look over what you missed. Some of the answers have some feedback to help you figure out why you may have gotten that question wrong. Once you finish taking the quiz, I want you to add to your phenomenon worksheet. This is the worksheet with the closed ecosphere that we started last Friday. What I want you to do is add to the description of process one. So th some things to think about as you're filling in that space. What is process one? I'll give you a really big hint. That process is photosynthesis, what we just talked about. List the equation. What's required to go in? What are my reactants? What are my products? Label your drawing. What inside your ecosphere is actually doing process one? Where are they getting the materials to do it? Where do those products go? So those are the kinds of things I'm looking for in process one. We'll go over my processes later on in the unit. 
If you finished all of those things, then you are done for the day. If these two things are not finished during class, they are your homework this evening. So again, finish the, take the quick check practice quiz on Google Classroom. Again, as long as you try the quiz, you will get your points. It does not matter how many you get right or wrong. I just want you to try. And then add to your process one on your phenomenon worksheet.